Welcome everyone. Let's talk about bradycardia. Bradycardia is any heart rate less than 60 beat per minute. The normal electrical activity of the heart starts from the SA node, which goes through the atria, it goes atrial contraction. This will be represented by P wave. Then the electricity goes to the IV node. In the IV node, there will be some delay, which are represented by PR interval. So from the start of the P to the R interval. Here it is called PR interval. Then in the IV, in the, uh, this goes to the bundle of his, which causes, uh, goes to the right and left bundle branch. It causes ventricular contraction. This will be represented by QRS. Then uh, there will be relaxation, which is represented by the T wave. So all these ACG changes can be seen on uh, represented on an. So uh, as you see, P arterial contraction, then PR interval, which is from the start of the P to the R here, uh, PR interval, which should be three up to five small square it normally norm not more than five not less than three so this three to five small square equals to 120 to 200 millisecond if you measure it by second then the QRS, the QRS represents the ventricular contraction, T wave represents uh, uh, relaxation. So if you want to read a rhythm strip on an ECG, you have to uh, read it through these steps. The first step, is there any electrical activity? You know that what's electrical activity. Second, third question are about QRS, second, third, and fourth. In the in the second one, it says, "What's the rate of the QRS? How you measure the rate of the QRS on the on the ECG strip? If it is regular, you say the number of large squares between two R intervals divided by three. Uh, so you divide three hundred." By this number, uh, it will be the heart rate. Third question is that the QR is, is rhythm, uh, the rhythm is regular or irregular? So the space between the RR intervals, regular or irregular? Number four question, QRS width is normal or narrow? So normal QRS should be less than, uh, normal QRS should be less than three, small square or it should be less than 120 millisecond so these three questions were about the QRS it means about ventricular contraction fifth question about the atria is there atrial activity as we said atria represented on the ECG by P wave so is there P wave the sixth question how is the relation between the P and the ventricular activity. How is the relation between atria and the ventricle? So how is the relation between, P, uh, this is equals to PR. So the PR interval, as we said, uh, it should be between three to five small square or um, between 120 to 200 milliseconds. So these are the ECG of the IV blockers. In the first degree IV block, if you closely look, there is prolongation of the PR interval, which is constant. So constant prolongation of the PR interval is the first degree IV block. In the second degree IV block, we have two types. Mobis type 1, also called Wenckebach phenomena, and Mobis type 2. So the second degree, the second degree have type 1 and type 2 Mobis. In type 1, what happens? There will be normal PR interval, then prolonging, then more prolongation, then one P wave is not conducting. Then the cycle starts again. So there will be progressive prolongation of PR interval 
until one P wave is not conducting. This is called mo Mobis type 1 or 1 Kiba. These two types, first degree and second degree Mobis type 1, they have less risk of adverse features. While the second one, the second, uh, second degree Avalog Mobis type 2, there is constant normal PR interval, but there are some occasional drops of the P wave. There is also another type of second degree, call it 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 block. So, uh, atria con the, the atria, there will be one P wave, then another P wave, two signal come, then QR is response one time. P, P, R, P, P, R, or 3 P and 1 QR is. Um, so, this is the uh, second degree, AV block, 2 to 1 block. The last type is called third degree AV block or complete AV block. The term complete means there is no relation between the atria and the ventricle. So this is atria, uh, this is ventricle, this is ventricle, this is ventricle. Where are the atria? This is atria, this is atria P wave. Uh, here, here. So there is no good relation between them. You don't know, um, they have contractions or they have electrical signal in different ways. Uh, they are not careful about each other. In this example, there is constant prolongation of the PR interval. It means it is more uh, phase degree IV block. In this one, the, again, there is constant prolongation. Again, this is phase degree IV block. In this one, the PR interval progressively prolonging until one P wave not conducting. Then the PR interval again become prolonging. This is more uh, second degree IV block, uh, Mobitz type one. There is three to one, three P to one, P, P, R, P, 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 Q, R, S. So this is uh, Mobitz type two. In this one, there is no relation between PR and R interval. This one is called third degree or complete IV block. What is the management of the bradycardia? So initially, you have to do ABCD for the patient, give oxygen if needed, obtain an IV access, withdraw blood, send for investigation, you have to do uh, to monitor the ECG, take, check their vital sign. Then, if there is an identifiable risk factor, example electrolyte abnormality, you have to treat. Then, after you have done ABC, you know whether the patient have have adverse features or not. What are the adverse features? Shock. So, if the patient having hypotension and uh, decreased capillary refill time and other features of shock like cold hand and moisty hand. Then syncope, which is transient loss of consciousness with full recovery due to global reduction of the blood flow to the brain. Myocardial ischemia, the patient have central chest pain, increase with exertion, relief with rest. There is ECG changes of ischemia, uh, plus might be there might be also uh, uh, increase in the cardiac enzyme. Heart failure, uh, the patient have shortness of breath, crackles in the chest, or leg edema, or um, features like um, hepatomegaly. So if the patient have adverse features suspected to be due to bradycardia, yes, then you have to give atropine. The dose of atropine is 0.5 milligram or 500 microgram IV. This is usually one ampoule. Then if there is satisfactory response, it is good. If no satisfactory response, you have to go to give more atropine. You give up to six ampoule or up to three milligram of atropine. More than three milligram of atropine um, can cause rebound bradycardia. That's why you don't give further doses. What you do after, um, after atropine, you may give adrenaline as interim measure. It is just before doing more 
uh, important measures. If there is no adrenaline, you might give isoprenaline, alternative drugs. So what are these alternative drugs? Example, aminophilin, dopamine, glucagon, especially in beta blocker, calcium channel blocker poisoning, glycoparate. So all these you might give instead, one of them you give instead of atropine or after you haven't given atropine and the patient not responded. Of course, if pacing is available, you have to do transcutaneous pacing. Pacing, what is pacing? You, you uh, add two adhesive pads on the patient's chest, then you wait. Um, you have to increase the uh, voltage and the heart rate of the patient. Instead of having a 40 beat, you have to make it 70. So this is a process usually done by cardiologist. If transcutaneous pacing was not successful or it is just a temporary measure, then sometimes they put a CV line and through it they put transvenous pacing. And some patients might need permanent pacing. Permanent pacing. So we have three types of pacing. Transcutaneous, transvenous, permanent. This is the job of cardiology. Uh, we have to revise this. So. If a patient have one of these adverse features or more than one, you give atropine. If atropine up to three milligram not effective, you may give adrenaline as interim measure. If not responded or uh, the patient needs this other important measure, you have to put pacing to the patient. So this is if the patient have adverse feature regardless the type of bradycardia. But if have no adverse feature, you have to look for the risk of asystole if the patient having morbid type 2 IV block or complete IV block or ventricular pause more than three seconds on the ECG or there was a recent uh, cardiac arrest then the patient is having risk of further asystole then you have to uh, go to the interim measures if the patient have no adverse feature have no risk of asystole you just discharge or observe the patient or you just send them for the cardiologist. The case studies will be um, studied during the, during the uh, practical le lectures in which you have to find if the patient is uh, unstable, giving atropine. If atropine is not useful, then next step is to um, ask for help and do a transcutaneous pacing. The atropine is used for symptomatic bradycardia. Do not give it in patients with cardiac transplant because in these cases the vagus nerve uh, is no more there. It's cut. It. The dose is 300 milligram or 300, 500 microgram. You repeat it up to 3 milligram and the actions it blocks vagus nerve, increases sinus rhythm, increases IV conduction. The common side effects are that of anticholinergic. It causes blurred vision, dry mouth, urinary retention, constipation, also causes confusion to the patient. Adrenaline, if you want to use adrenaline for patients with um, bradycardia as an interim measure the dose is like that you have to infuse 2 to 10 microgram per minute I have to notify you that each ampoule of adrenaline contains 1 milligram so 1 milligram equals to 100 uh, uh, equals to 1000 microgram um, you have to give uh, about 2 to 10 microgram per minute and increase the dose uh, from 2 up to 10, up to the patient having response. Thank you so much.